name is Eric Satter. I'd like to thank you for joining me again for another exciting episode. This one is going to be called Shooting with the Baron. Now, you might remember me from the famous videos of 1 through 10 of How to Brew with the Baron. And hopefully the upcoming episodes of Fighting with the Baron, Throwing with the Baron, Dancing with the Baron, and probably Sand Casting with the Baron. That ought to be a good one. All right. This is specifically about archery. Now, some of the things I'm talking to you about will actually be about, uh, that can be used for things like rifle shooting, pistol shooting, things like that. I'm gonna be specifically talking about archery. Now, some of you might be going, okay, so how do you know this much? Well, number one, I'm retired uh, Army infantry officer. I have had uh, five overseas tours, so I do know how to shoot. <laughs> uh, I also was the down in Murdy Age when I was there. I was the Queen's Yeoman's Champion, and I have shot a lot ever since I was a kid, both bows and guns. So, I'm going to first start talking about certain things. Now, please be aware, everything that is here is backwards. So when I write something, I am actually going to be writing everything backwards. So if there's an A that's wrong or an E that's wrong, I'm doing my best. So please work with me. Now, when you're shooting archery, I'm not going to go to the basics of archery. Pretty much everyone is going to have that skill already, or they're going to develop their own style. I'm going to be specifically talking about issues that come into play and then how to fix those issues. So, we're gonna go with looks better. All right, the first major issue is going to be about aiming. One of the things that everyone starts to get issues about when they start shooting is consistency. Well, I'm going to tell you some certain things that's going to occur that might seem common sense, or it's like, well, I know, how, I know what the problem is, how do I fix it? So the first thing I'm going to tell you about is one of the issues about shooting, and all of a sudden, you do that. I'm going to use uh, six arrows as a guide because that's pretty much the standard that we standard number that we use. So, if your arrows are pretty much going up and down, down, up, up, down, okay. That's a breathing issue, okay? Give you an example, all right? If you pull back here and you go. Now, of course, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but a small movement of your breath going up or down is going to bring your arrows up or bring your arrows down. So if the majority of your problem is a close to a straight line, but up and down, it's a breathing issue. So now I'm going to teach you how to fix the breathing issue. Okay? Whenever you're shooting, there's always the tendency of everyone holding their breath. Okay? So they go and they go, all right, I'm about to shoot. Okay, two things occur when you inhale and hold. Now, once you become really good, you can actually do this. But until you get that nice muscle memory in, you're causing problems for yourself. Number one, you're causing muscle tension. When you inhale and hold, 
you're causing your muscles to move and vibrate, okay? That's gonna come later when I talk about the arc of movement. So when you're doing this, you have a tendency of shaking. You're not going to have a good focal point. Now, real quickly, when I talk about a focal point, that is the point on which you determine where you're going to set your point. I use my tip of the arrow, and I put it in, and I go, now where is my focal point where I put the tip of that arrow at every single time I shoot, okay? So mine is a stronger bow, so when I shoot at 20, I actually have to aim below the target because my arrow is still going up in the trajectory. At 30, it's very close. At 40, I have to shoot just at the top of the target for it to arc back down. So wherever you want, you want to make sure you keep the same focal point every single time, okay? So from there, if you're holding your breath, you go and you hold, you have a tendency of shaking a little bit. And you could also have what's known as the heartbeat uh, vibration. If you hold your breath, you sometimes can hear that you have, you can count your heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom. And it can increase. You never want your heart rate to increase, you want it to decrease. When it starts to increase, that's when you start to shake a little bit. Also, when your heartbeat is going, your body has a tendency of actually muscles going in the same rate as your heart. So you want to make sure you're slowing your heart rate down. To do that, what you want to do is you want to exhale. Now, when people start doing draws, what a lot of people do is they come in and they pull and then they are tense on their draw. That's part of the whole thing too. What you want to do is you want to have a nice relaxed draw. And that starts with the draw to the hold to the release. Now, to do that, what you want to do is you want to take a couple breaths. Just, it's better to breathe in through the nose and out through your mouth. One of the things that occurs is when you start to inhale, your chest expands. Now, this is a benefit. So when you start to draw, instead of, all right, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna hold my breath, you're now compressing muscle groups. What you wanna do is you wanna relax them. So the best thing to do is actually inhale and draw the bow back at the same time, because you're inhaling, which is expanding your lungs and actually bringing your chest out. When that happens, it's easier to draw. One breath to slow down. Next breath, inhale. And then. Now, as you see right there, when you inhale, it's automatically drawing the ball, drawing the bow back. You're not trying to fight anything. It's a natural act. What I'm showing you is all natural acts to your body. So when you do that, you inhale once, exhale, inhale a second time, exhale, and when you exhale, you get into your nice, strong, Stance. When you get into your stance, you always go into the same stance. The same stances, the same position of the arm, the same uh, place where you want to put uh, your bow string or the knot or whatever. You can have it right next to your nose, you can have it down to your chin, wherever is comfortable for you and your aiming practices. So when you do that, inhale. Exhale. Now you're relaxed. You're not 
holding your breath and compressing and start doing muscle, muscle shakes. You're relaxed. This is what's known as a natural respiratory pause. Okay? Okay, a natural respiratory pause is where your body naturally does not go up and down. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. The only time that your body does that all the time is when you're running, exercising, you know, flight or fight response, things like that. So what happens is your body naturally goes inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, Inhale, exhale, and relax. Now, you can practice this at home and just see how it works. Just sit down on a chair and go. And after you exhale, count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, I didn't have to actually inhale till number seven or when your body starts to panic a little bit, you're like, man, you need to breathe. So the natural respiratory pause is, be, is at the bottom of your breathing. So to get ready, you should inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and then pause, until you need to start inhaling. Now, here is where it gets interesting. This part here to this part here can be anything from about five to eight seconds, okay? That is when you're trying to pause. If you're just naturally pausing, it's going to be, make sure I get this right, Not doing too bad, six to eight. For when you're trying on a natural, it's going to be ah, my three is wrong. Oh, I was gonna. Three to five seconds. This is the point when you're doing archery is when you are relaxed and you're focusing and you're like, all right, there, there, there. After about five seconds, your body is going to start to panic. So this is the time where you aim and you shoot. You do that every single time. You don't wait until up here to do it. You don't do it here. You wait till right here. You have all day long to shoot one arrow. If you're going here and you're like, okay, okay, starting to panic a little bit, I better shoot. Nope, don't shoot. Just, okay. Take a couple deep breaths. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. Oh my gosh. Get some oxygen in you to lower your heart rate again. Release. This will take care of so many issues. And like I said before, when they go up and down, it means that you're shooting at different parts of your breath. That's what happens there. Now,
Let's talk about groupings. There's a thing that I call follow the penguin. When penguins go, they go as a group. Except for every once in a while, you get one penguin that starts to walk away. Then you get another penguin that follows that penguin. Then you get another penguin that follows that penguin. And all of a sudden, you got a few strays. This is where everyone always tries to readjust their aiming point from the previous arrow. You don't do that. You never adjust to find where your targeting group is, okay? When you shoot, shoot six arrows, okay? When you have three arrows that land, say I'm, I am aiming right here. For 20 meters, 20 yards, I'm shooting down here. If I get an arrow here, if I get an arrow here, I then get another arrow here. I get one arrow here. I get another arrow here. And I get my sixth arrow there. Okay? My targeting point is right there. When you can get three arrows in the size of a tennis ball, that is where your target is going to land every single time. These other ones are bad releases, wind gusts, whatever. But if I go and I shoot here and I go, oh man, I need to go up higher. I'm now going to shift up here. This shot could go way up here. And then all of a sudden I go, oh, I better go down a little bit. Then all of a sudden this shot is way over here. And I go, man, I need to really compensate. I'll go over here. And then my next one is, well, it doesn't work. You're going to get wind gusts. You're going to get uh, different draw lengths. You're going to try and speed up your shot. You never shoot from the last arrow. You always want to find your targeting group. So from here, this is my this is where all my arrows are going to land when I aim here. So now to adjust, I need to adjust here and here. So I will go, and this is where, oh, well, I gotta go three circles over. No. Different things occur because you're adjusting at a certain uh, rate. So if you need to go three circles over, adjust one, uh, horrible, one and a half over. You need to adjust three up, you go one and a half up, and you shoot this configuration again. You find where The three target, the three most con uh, concentrated arrows are again. Now you realize this is now your central targeting point. From there, it's trying to move anything slightly is just you trying to just do a slight shift. So instead of going, oh, I'm going to shoot between the yellow. Say this is yellow and this is blue. All right, this is blue. I am, instead of shooting here, I'm going to shoot just above the blue. Don't do any major changes. You can do the small changes after that. Because when we get into the small changes, that's where the arc of movement comes in. And I'll explain that later. Now, let's talk about another issue that usually comes into place. How many people seem to, when they shoot, shoot left? Almost 
a lot or all the time? It's a very common thing. Two reasons. One minor reason is that when you aim, you're not aiming directly in front like this. You're going across your body. So you're going to shift and aim slightly left. So that's why when most people aim, they're like, okay, I'm shooting left. I have to aim to the right a little bit because my arrow is going to go left. That's going to be natural. That's the small correction. The big corrections are when this occurs. All right, now what happens here is two things. Number one is going to be how you're holding the bow in your left hand, okay? When you're holding the bow, now this is for a right-handed. Let me clarify this. This is about shooting from a right-handed per perspective. Left-handers will have a different aspect. So you're shooting like this. Now, when you're shooting, you should have your thumb and fingers open. How many people do that? A few. Most people go and they grab it. Okay? Now, this occurs two things. When you're holding on to it and squeezing, two aspects are going to occur. One, once you release, you're so tight right here that it's going to shift this way. So after you let it go, it's going with your natural response because you're doing muscle contraction back here and you're pulling this way so your bow doesn't go that way. And once that releases, you have a tendency of drawing the arrow to the left. Very common practice. The way to fix that is to have an open grip. This is going to take time because once you get into muscle memory, once you get done shooting, you're going to naturally have a tendency of just grabbing it so it doesn't fall forward. Now, there is a thing called a wrist sleeve. Essentially, it's this. You put it on your wrist. Tighten it. Now all of a sudden, it's not going to go anywhere. Now this is a little tighter than usual. I just quickly made it for the class. If you think, oh well, hey, that's just cheating. Actually, this is almost a requirement for Olympic archer shooters. And their stuff is just massively balanced. And their goal is to always have this open. So when it drops, they can catch it and there's no dropping the bow on the ground. Once you get really good, you won't need to have the wrist sling to catch it. That's going to solve one of the two major issues, okay? Now, the other issue that comes into play is along with holding and trying to pull it this way to balance, you're also going to have, some people have a tendency of rotating their wrist. Rotating the wrist does two things. It's either going to do this, or it's going to do this, okay? Holding it like this stops all of that. It stops, once you release, the focal point is just to let it open because you're pushing out and you're not trying to draw to the left your arm. You're just pushing it straight out so it goes forward. You're not gripping it so it's not rotating. It's also not what I call porpoising, going up and down by doing this.
Every time you shoot, you shoot one arrow. You don't think about the one you just shot. Oh man, that one went really bad. Hey, life happens. Little wind. Some annoying person behind you is like, at you! And you're like, Ugh! Forget about it. Okay? This is mostly technique, total refinement. The more you make it emotional or condensed or stressful, your shooting is going to be bad. Perfect example, if you ever shot a crossbow, those veer hardly anywhere. You aim, all right, it shoots a little bit low, you just bring it up a little bit, and those bolts will shoot continuously because it's the same uh, length. It is the same poundage. There's no change to shifting, to body, maybe a little bit of wind, stuff like that. But it has almost nothing to do with the release, anything, because everything is all mechanical. So once you get to that thing, almost all of your shots are gonna be easily within a tennis ball. Now, release. The reason that you're going to get arrows When you get a group of arrows, say you got two up here and four down there. Okay, that's your release. When you get into your stance and you're back here and you're holding, what's going to happen is everyone has a tendency of either going to the side or maybe right before they release, they bring it forward a little bit or before they release, they pull it back a little bit. When you pull it back, some are going to go higher. When you release it, or when you bring it forward before you release it, they're going to go down low. If you're consistently high or low, high or low, high or low, it's your release. Straight up and down, you're breathing. That's it. These are pretty much set facts. Now, how do you get your release the same? Once I get it, I get it to my face. What some people have a tendency of doing is once they get here, they bring it out and then release. If you bring it out, you're going to get a lot of shots to the left because you're bringing it out and you're making it go towards the left. It's another release issue, okay? How do you fix this? You just always keep your fingers against your face. All right, I'm right here, this is good. When I release, I'm just gonna draw back and I'm gonna keep my fingers and I'm gonna rub it against my face, that's it. If you bring it forward, you're taking your fingers off your face. You don't want to do that. You get in there, position. Now, a lot of people take one of the knuckles on their thumb and they position it either, there's a nice little, uh, right behind the jaw, there's a little uh, groove in your jaw right there. Some people always position it right there. Some people go behind. It is whatever works for you that's most comfortable. Very important. From here, all you do is bring it straight back. Keep it on your face. Now, one of the other interesting things that people are going to have a problem with is where do I put my fingers specifically? Some people are told, get it directly in the joint. Some people are told, make sure you get on the finger pin, finger prints, right on the tips. Others are taught to go to the meaty side. I'm a big proponent of the meaty side for two specific reasons. It's both the meaty side on the fingers and the meaty side on the palm, okay? 
When you have this and you're pushing straight back, you're using the muscle right here as a cushion, okay? You're using the fingers right here and you're using the tips right here to ensure that the string is always in the same spot. Instead of going like this, which has a tendency of rolling the string, which can cause some problems, for the tips, sometimes the poundage does not make tip shooting very easy. Tip shooting for some people makes it more detailed, which is great. But this is the major issues that I'm trying to fix for a lot of people. So number one, consistency is always the thing. <sighs> number two, you have to be in a relaxed state. Number three, understand when you're aiming, if it doesn't feel right, don't shoot. Like I said, you have all day to shoot one arrow. Number four, do not shoot from the previous arrow. Aim, get your target spot. All right, at this range, I gotta do it here. And you just keep on shooting there to understand where your grouping is. Okay, now we're going to go to a minor issue. Yes, part of the reason I'm doing this is to figure out how to write back. Better, still not very good, but anyway. Now, the minor issues that come into play is going to be what's known as arc of movement. The body has a natural ability, again, to keep itself balanced. Okay, so, example is, if you're trying to shoot and you're leaning forward, okay, the natural thing is to go back, well now you're kind of twisted on a bad form. If you're leaning back, that some people do, some people have a tendency of bringing up the shot a little bit higher, or after you release, they have a tendency of going backwards or whatever. Your form is supposed to stay the same no matter what. In the military and some people who have really nice specific weapons and everything, they have what's known as a dot sight. We don't use them when we shoot in the SCA because, well, it's not natural. But a dot sight was specifically designed to see and correct the arc of movement. Now, the arc of movement for some people is going to be almost like a figure eight. If you ever see something and you're there, you're gonna have a tendency of doing all of these minor corrections and shifting. That is arc of movement, okay? Some people will actually do this with a tip. They're going to go up, and they're going to go back and forth. That's an arc of movement. Some people are going to go and actually do this. Okay, to me that is more of a stance because you're like this, and you're just and you're trying to get the right angle and everything. Whenever you're adjusting anything, you should adjust one thing first, okay? Whatever it is. I usually start with the biggest thing and go small. All right, my arc of movement is pretty bad. I need to relax and I need to separate my upper body from my lower body. All right, I need to get a good stance, bend my knees, and then I separate the upper half of my body from the lower half of my body. So I can do that, and what I'll do is I will do some shifting left and right, 
go up and down by not doing this, but just shifting my entire torso up and down. Make sure you, my entire torso up and down. Then I will go with what is the most steadiest spot? That is going to be the left arm, okay? I don't shoot with an arm guard. I find that distracting. And I don't usually hit my arm very often. So that's a benefit for me. But you, when you're out there, keep your hand open. All you're doing now is you're pushing out. You're not shifting, you're not grabbing, you're not pulling left or right. You're not using any of your bicep, tricep in a uh, contracting or conflicting manner. It's just straight out. Then from there, I will go and I will find my comfortable spot. And then I will adjust by, all right, my spot right here allows me to shoot here. All I need to do is do a slight adjustment to this spot to try and raise all of this. Now again, sometimes you're going to get that one arrow that's crap. All right. That's usually going to be shooting too fast, bad release, something's in your brain, all that type of stuff. It sucks. It happens all the time, and you can't let it get to you. Concentrate on these. All right? That one's gone. That one's gone. It's already shot. It should not be in your memory. Okay? Form, consistency, and the small corrections that work for you. If the small correction is actually going from here and leaning back, instead of just doing this, I'm going to lean back a little bit and that's going to raise the arrow up slightly, then that is the correct correction for your form. Okay? Some people actually shoot like this. If that is your form, that's your form. Sometimes when you shoot that, some people are going to get a bit of an angle or strangely enough, sometimes they just go straight up and down because from here, we're shooting always left. Doing this, it's not left. It's actually more like an up and down correction. So at that point, all right, I'm going to just lean in a little bit because it's shooting high, and I will shoot that way. Or, if you're really good, you can change the position of where you want to place your knock on your chin. You might go, all right, for, I do not endorse this, but I do know some people are like, all right, at 20, I'm going to shoot above my lip. At 30, I'll shoot at my lip, and at 40, I'll go below my lip. If that's the way you shoot, that's great. For me, it's really hard to adjust or correct issues. But they have been doing it so long that it comes to the final step, which is muscle memory. Once you get to the point where you're like, all right, this is good, all right, just one arrow at a time, same form, you're going to naturally go, okay, this, oh, I'm almost right there. Because you're in your natural muscle memory form, your muscle has memory that position, that knock, that stance, right into place. It's going to be when you're shooting this and you go to 30 and you're like, ah, oh, crap, I need to go to 20. It's going to happen. You just have to adjust. Remember, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta shift, I gotta shoot just below my target for 30, about 40, I gotta go right at the top of the target form. That's what's gonna happen. The 
benefits to all this is understanding first what works for you, okay? The second thing is going to be how to correct for bad mistakes. The first thing that's going to always come into play is going to be more mental, which is going to cause straight to physical tension and stress. Get rid of all that. Don't listen to people around you. Don't do anything. Just get into your nice form. Keep shooting the same way. It's going to be relaxing. You're going to go, wow, this is easy. All right, well, the wind's a little bit harder. Uh, it's going from left to right. I'll have to shoot same thing, but I just have to go one circle over. That's it. You know how to correct from your natural form. And you don't go, okay, I got to go like this, and therefore that's going to change it, and I'm going to do this. No, no, stop thinking about it. You got your form. So the more you shoot slowly with the right form, the faster and stronger your muscle memory is going to be. All right. That's pretty much my class for today. Tomorrow I will have another class, and this is how to set up a archery field. All right. I'm going to go through with my nice little backwards dry erase board. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how simple it is, the reasons why we do it, and then add some cool things like, well, instead of just doing 20, 30, 40, we're going to do what's known as a clout shoot, which is essentially you're shooting way up in the air and you're letting the arrows come down, which is a pretty fun shoot, but you need a huge area. But we'll talk about that. I'd like to thank you again for shooting with the Baron, and I hope you guys have a good day.